Back in 1889, Jonathan Samuel Yoder came to this corner of Clackamas County and built a small family sawmill. Since that time, it's burned down and been rebuilt three different times, but it endures and it's still a family operation. Photographer Todd Sonfleet came here to show us just how little has changed. Eighteen eighty nine is when they built the first sawmill. J. S. Yoder started it with sawmill parts from Missouri, and there are some still in here being used that went through all the fires. So we got a fresh sharp saw on this morning because I want to make sure I think it's going to run good. My name is David Yoder, and it's Yoder Mill Incorporated. The address is Canby, Oregon, but it's out in the country. The community named Yoder. Uh, you can actually find it on a map, kind of. My hired guy, Lowell, he's been here for a very long time. I think it was like 19 years old when he started here. We buy logs and saw and sell lumber to the general public. The rough sawn, it's rounded and it's a little bit rougher cut than the bandsaw. That's why most of the mills are a bandsaw because it's a lot smoother cut. But to retool up for stuff, it wouldn't be worth doing that because there's enough niche for the circular saw and this works fairly well, even as old as it is. The customer we're working for, is, he had logs hauled in and he wants to have them sawed to his lumber list, like two by sixes. They want to be planed. The two by 12s are left rough. So we're processing those logs for him. Daily exercise. Yeah. What do you think? Be done by the end of the week? Be done cut it this week, yeah. yeah. There's only a few mills around, and this is one of them that I know that still cut rough cut. My project we're doing right now is getting ready to build or rebuild our cabin. It burnt down in Detroit, Oregon, back in the, the 2020 fire. And I'll do this cabin out of rough cut, one by 12s, and uh, I just like the look of it. So, you know, that's why I come here comes out rougher, it's not smooth. And it's kind of cool being able to use my own trees off the property to rebuild what, you know, what burnt down. Yeah, it looks a little scary because it's the same saw setup. It's electric, obviously, now. It used to be steam. Well, that's the old steam engine. They used to use that as the power. And they just left it set the way this is when they hooked up the electric. When they turned electric here, they went to an old sawmill and bought parts. So they bought this wall with all the components on it, cut it off, brought it over here, mounted it, wired it. Well, you did what you had to do. So that's what we run this all with, even up to today. take out a lot of sawdust. So there's a little danger with all the sawdust and it's burnt three times and put a mill back on the same property. Well, I started here in 1976. Have you ever heard of retirement? Uh, no. Lowell's role here is basically anything and everything. He shows up, gets everything ready to go. 
as he's preparing the logs out there, we run a metal detector over because you find nails and hardware at times. Uh, nails, iron, anything goes beep. And that means uh, problems. Uh, just hit nails. Thought we had them all out, didn't beep with the detector, so it's not always 100%. This is the true metal detector us because it'll find them. If they're in there, you're gonna hit them with this and upset yourself. Once I hit a bolt in a log and it knocked teeth out and bent the saw, pieces kind of went flying around. It's replaceable teeth. And you can see the difference when they get worn out, the size difference. And there's 44 teeth, and each tooth costs about $5 a piece. So you don't want to hit too many nails. That upsets a person. Well, there's no fun making the small stuff because it just takes longer. The bigger the piece, generally, the, get it out of here quicker, but the small stuff, it's just all this cutting. It's down to just stacking this job out and counting it, making a bill, and it's done, which that's always the best part of the job. That would be pretty neat to have it go on more generations. I'm the fourth, and I got a couple nephews that they're interested. That means a lot to me. You can now find many Oregon Field Guide stories and episodes online. And to be part of the conversation about the outdoors and environment here in the Northwest, join us on Facebook.